The Immortal John Hancock here with a simple video. It's a great day for me. Uh, I've been waiting for the new Star Wars movie, Rogue One, and it comes out today. I'm going to be seeing it, and it's a day off for me. I have a snow day, so whew, man, I needed a break. So, all right. So, I'm here to talk today about uh, overlooked Star Wars games. Uh, there are many, many, many Star Wars games out there, good, bad, and in between. And I would like to talk today about some of the games that get overlooked. Um, these games technically aren't my favorite. They're not terrible games. Uh, for one reason or another, they just uh, don't get talked about a lot or or just not often in the discussion of the best Star Wars games. But, but they're worth checking out. And so uh, many of these games are offered on multiple formats. So uh, what's nice about emulation is many of these are available to play for free. So without further ado, here we go. Uh, the 2600 had uh, four Star Wars games and one unreleased uh, um, prototype. Uh, this game, Star Wars Return of the Jedi Death Star Battle, is not the best game on the 2600, uh, but it's a pretty good it's a pretty good Star Wars game. Uh, unique gameplay. Uh, the weird thing about this game is it doesn't have any Star Wars music in it, uh, but it's good uh, for people that are Atari 8-bit computer fans. Uh, they also made uh, this game for that as well. So I don't know if it's available in other formats, but uh, I played it on the 2600. It's pretty good. Uh, the 8 bit computer had some better graphics. So good game. Definitely check it out. Uh, the unreleased uh, Atari 2600 game is Ewok Adventure. And I had a reproduction cartridge made of it. <laughs> and uh, this game, this game is, is not the best but it's interesting and so if you hate Ewoks avoid it but uh, it's got some pretty unique gameplay and uh, Ewok Adventure is a, is a pretty good 2600 game again it's a uh, it's unreleased and so the ROMs out there um, it's it's pretty fun pretty fun to play so they did make a uh, Star Wars game for the 32X and it was Star Wars Arcade and I do believe it was based on an arcade game. Pretty uncommon. Uh, it's 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 laugh. It, Admiral Akbar in this game has some of the worst voice acting I think I've ever seen in a game. But it's it's got a two-player mode. It's a lot of fun. It's it's fun and fast arcade uh, gameplay. Uh, you know the graphics definitely haven't held up, but it is it's worth checking out. Star Wars Arcade. Uh, it is one of the first games I got for my uh, 32X. So if you have a 32X, this is worth checking out. It's not too much either. It's not too expensive. So N64 had four released Star Wars games on it. And uh, the first game was Shadows of the Empire. And, you know, um, this game, you know, is, is set in between, I do believe, uh... Empire and Jedi, but it's a side story, you know, it has nothing to do with the movies, and um, you know, you get to you get to reenact some some great scenes. You do get to reenact the the Battle of Hoth, which this the success of this game move, uh, made uh, Factor Five move on to do Rogue Squadron. But, anyways, this game often gets overlooked. It's a mediocre platform game. It is very challenging. You can get it on PC as well. Graphics are better. Um, I played this game a lot. Uh, problems and all. Um, gosh, the, the battle with uh, Boba Fett in this game. Whew, brutal. Um, but yeah, it's it's long. It's challenging. It's got some, you know, it hasn't aged incredibly well. But it's worth checking out. It's definitely, if you got an N64, def definitely worth picking this up. Even loose card, it's pretty cheap too. That's the other thing. Good game. The other game that gets overlooked on the N64 is the final game that Factor 5 did for it, and it's Battle for Naboo. Now, Rogue Squadron was amazing for the N64, and, hands, and then Racer was also very popular. But but Battle for Naboo was just kind of, eh. You know, if you can look past that it has anything to do with the, the, prequel, the prequel trilogy, this is actually a pretty good game. Um, you know, it's pretty fun, good graphics. It is also available on PC. And um, it, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, if, if you're a fan of the Factor Five games, which I'm a huge fan of them, uh, this is worth. This is good. Totally recommend playing that. All right. 
so there's other overlooked games. Uh, this is this is one another another one set in the uh, prequel trilogy uh, timeline. Uh, Star Wars Episode One Jedi Power Battles, and this is a a essentially a Jedi brawler, and it is available on the PlayStation as well, the original PlayStation. And uh, the Dreamcast one has has better graphics, and so I, I definitely recommend this one if if you can uh, get this one. Uh, good game, good game, uh, good side scrolling fun. Um, yeah, I get to play as Jedi's lightsabers, you know, taking out things. That's fun, and it's two player. I love I love multiplayer games. There's not enough of them out there um, that that are made now, and so anytime. Anytime you can, you know, game with a friend or something on one screen, on a couch, you know, having a good time. Thumbs up for me. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Uh, Xbox had a ton of games uh, made in the Star for Star Wars. And some of them get overlooked. And so, the first one I want to bring up is uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now, this, this actually was a pack-in at one time with with Tetris Worlds with the original Xbox. Um, it's got some great multiplayer uh, offline capabilities, I do believe, um, uh, with the system link. And so um, the single player game is so-so, but um, there's some great multiplayer uh, up to four players on this, I do believe. Yes, pretty sure, pretty sure four players. Anyways, uh, it's been a while since I've played this, but I, I recommend this. Uh, again, games not not too expensive either. You know, these a lot of these game recommendations aren't too bad, and so uh, I'm recommending them for people that you know like Star Wars and want to play a video game. Next one up, uh, this is this is, I think most hardcore fans know that this is a good game, but there might be other people that overlook it because again, it was it was in the the, the prequel trilogy timeline, and a lot of you know some fans are like, eh, I don't want to play that. Republic, Star Wars Republic Commando is really good. It's squad-based, first-person shooter, um, just just great. I mean, I, I really, really enjoy this game. And, um, you know, Republic Commando, uh, to me, is, is one of my hands down, of, of all the ones discussed today, uh, it is overlooked quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not as cheap as some of the other games I recommend, but um, it's worth checking out. If you can find a, an inexpensive copy of this, it's, it's good. It's really good. Um, Good game. This game, uh, this is like for any RPG fan out there, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, two Sith Lords. Now, the first one gets all the praise and all the credit, and the second one uh, often gets criticized as not being as good as the first one, which is true. I agree with that. It was rushed. It came out right at the tail end uh, in December, uh, mid-2000s, and it just... You know, uh, for many reasons, uh, it, it it was a little bit short. It, it, was, it got panned a lot of just being having the same problems and bugs as the first game. This is a good game. It's a really good game. And a lot of people just didn't play it. And so it didn't sell as well. Um, you know, it was it was missing part of the game that wasn't able to be finished. And so it kind of ends. Eh. But I uh, recommend it. I recommend this game. Check it out. For any RPG fan, especially, um, and or like a, a fan of the original Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic, it's a good game. Totally, check it out. All right. So definitely. Um, so I, I used to play a ton on the PC, and I don't know what it was. I think it had to do a lot with the graphics cards uh, requirements costing as much as a console. I just I stopped gaming a lot on the PC, and it's nice to see that there's so many choices now for PC gamers and it's 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 almost you know it's never it never went away there's tons of gaming gaming on the PC is just as good as it ever has been and so one really 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 happy memory I had uh, before I, I stopped playing on the PC as much I'm playing a little bit more now on Steam is Star Wars Rebellion this is uh, a very very deep tactical game on on PC, uh, it's got a clunky interface. It doesn't have a lot of action. It's it's very tactical. It's it's very deep. I totally recommend it. Um, this game is definitely overlooked. Uh, for for any strategy fan out there, check this out. It's really good. Um, it's old again. It's not too much, 
um, you can get, you know, typically, you know, classic PC games, especially without the big box or anything, just a, just a CD case and stuff, are going to be pretty inexpensive. Recommend this. This is a good game. Ah! Last and definitely not least on my list is a game I talked about in my previous uh, video on, on my favorite Star Wars games, but I didn't go into uh, depth about why I'm recommending this. And so, Star Wars Rebel Strike, Rogue Squadron 3, the game itself is not nearly as good as the other games. And so, I'm recommending people to play it if they haven't, even though it's not as, it, it's, it's far, far from the other Rogue Squadron games. Here's the cool part, which I did say in a previous video about a year ago, but I'm going to bring it up again, is they have the arcade unlockables on this game. Um, so you can play Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, which is pretty uncommon arcade game. You can also play on MAME, but uh, that and then the, the Return of the Jedi arcade game as well. And so uh, the, the main reason I, I recommend this is just because you know, this was it. You know, this was the final, the Factor 5 game that they made for for GameCube. And, you know, for the most part, that, it, it was done after that, you know, they, they for Star Wars and Factor 5. And so, I totally recommend it. The arcade unlockables are worth it alone. Also, uh, like I recommended in the other um, video, that Star Wars Rogue Squadron, uh, uh, Rogue Squadron 2, is two-player on this disc and so even though Red Bull Strikes broken it's got an amazing game as, as a bonus on it so I took of all the, all the games today I recommend uh, I recommend this one the most and so it's definitely it's great to play in the GameCube you know play it on your Wii backwards compatible love that feature and so there you have it those are the games that I recommend um, what are your games that you feel that are Star Wars games that are overlooked? I definitely would love to hear from you. Um, those are some ones I just pulled out of my collection. I've, you know, uh, gosh, it's it's been a while since uh, I've got to enjoy and savor a good Star Wars game, and so you know I have a day off today, and so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna fire up some of these and play them. And so uh, it's definitely it's definitely enjoyable to have a day off and on top of that I get to watch Star Wars Rogue One with some friends tonight so I'm really excited about that so thank you again for watching this uh, I look forward to doing two videos a week and uh, thank you so much you guys be safe and uh, I'll see you next week take care